It's a collaboration of not only the EU, but the biggest nations on this planet, such as the United States, China, India. It sounds like a very difficult collaboration. How does it work? In order to make fusion available on Earth, you need a larger size uh, plant. You need, uh, the size is, is absolutely critical. And so not a single country, whatever powerful it could be, could afford to construct this equipment on a reasonable time stay. So it's why we need collaboration. And all these partners know it's a unique opportunity to demonstrate the feasibility of fusion. And so there is a driving force behind each of these members, the seven members, that they have to work together, despite their diversity, their okay, relationship on other fields. And again, it's challenging, you could imagine, because there is no similarity, easy similarity between, uh, for example, uh, somebody from California and somebody from India. But all these people, all the ITER members, feel it is the only way to be able to get uh, uh, fully knowledgeable about the fusion capacity. And yet, sir, even within Europe, for instance, you have different energy policies between, let's say, the Germans who are pretty much anti-nuclear now and the French who are very pro-nuclear, uh, and yet around the world, the Indians, the Chinese, and a new administration in the States, it sounds a very, very difficult collaboration. How does it work? But there is a common understanding of all these countries and the political leaders. They are fully aware that now the way the energy supply in the world is uh, provided uh, with 85% coming from fossil fuel is not at all sustainable. They will develop okay, renewable technology, some other fission nuclear technology, whatever it is. They know it will not last for many centuries. It will last maybe for one century or something like this. They know we need innovation. And so is why they are fully uh, committed to work together in order to have this breakthrough demonstration, once they have this demonstration that we are able to produce net fusion power, they will take their own okay, development and see how they could take advantage of that. But they know it is a common, okay, fundamental experience which will be the breakthrough about the innovation on fusion. There's been a lot of talk about the size of the budget for ETER and going over budget as well. How do you respond to those accusations about spiralling costs? This project is a quite challenging project. We have a lot of innovation uh, technology, the cryogenics, uh, the neutronics, uh, the magnetism and all these things. It's the first of a kind and when uh, the project started it was a very large uh, I would say political enthusiasm but no real concern about the industrial challenge we have to face. So, in the early years of the project, uh, it was not properly considered the estimate of the cost. When I came in uh, nearly two years ago, with my own project experience, I say, there is no way to go this way. We need to have a very clear planning, a very clear schedule, a very precise cost estimate, with uh, working closely with the supplier, working closely with the best lab. And I do believe now we are lucky enough that we have the full support of the seven members who approved last November uh, during the ITER Council our new schedule and the evaluation of the cost. And uh, now we are fixed. It looks it's a large amount of money, but if we succeed, it will be a real bonus for everybody. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.